So in the last video that I put up here, I showed you guys how to add a start and stop remote control buttons to your WEG CFW10 variable frequency drive. In this video here, I'm going to show you how to add another feature to that, which is remote speed control. This is accomplished using some very simple, very common parts. You just need three lengths of wire and a potentiometer. That's all you need to do it. There are many different kinds of potentiometers available on the market. There's rotary, linear, or even ones hooked up to a foot pedal. Now, I've chosen a rotary for this particular application. So your standard potentiometer is going to have three different leads on it. We'll call these one, two, and three. Generally, the outer two are going to be ground and voltage, and the middle one will be sent. Now, on the CFW10, ground is going to be hooked to pin 7. Voltage will be hooked up to pin 9, and then sense, which is the varying uh, resistance across the two, is going to be on pin 8. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up this potentiometer to my VFD here, and then I'll show you the programming parameters needed to make it use the potentiometer as a speed reference instead of the keypad. There we go, the potentiometer is installed. So now let's go ahead and program those parameters. The first one you're going to want to set, this is P221, which is your speed reference. This tells the VFD where it's getting, how fast it should go. Um, normally that would be via the up-down buttons on the keypad, or if you had one with the built-in potentiometer, a lot of times it'll be programmed to do that. But in this case, since we want it on the outside, I need to go into the menu by pressing P, and I need to scroll to P221, like I said. And I need to go ahead and change this. The default is 3 for this particular version. It will be 0 for standard style inverters. But we want to go ahead and change this to 1, which corresponds to analog input 1. That tells it to listen to the potentiometer for a voltage, which it will translate into a speed. We go into 1, and then we're going to save that. And that should be all we need to change. So now, if I were to go ahead and start the motor, when I spin the potentiometer, I can accelerate or decelerate the motor. And it'll listen to this all the way across the band. I'm going to go ahead and screw down the potentiometer and put my switches back on the front panel and button up all this whole thing. And I'll give you a quick run over of how the entire thing's been uh, wired up. All right, so I've got everything all hooked up on the front panel. I've got my start and stop switches that I installed in the previous video there, and you can reference the description below if you missed on how to do that one. And I've got my potentiometer installed for speed reference. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cover down onto my enclosure here. Snap that on there. And now I have retrofitted my drill press with a CFW10 variable frequency drive so that I can control the speed of this indefinitely. I don't have to change any belts or anything like that. So quite simply, press start, activate the drive, and then just twist the potentiometer to select your uh, desired RPM. And you're ready to uh, go ahead and drill whatever workpiece you may be working with. Now, if you've got any questions or you're looking to purchase a variable frequency drive or any of the accessories I've mentioned in the videos, check below for the product listing or visit our website. It's www.temcoindustrialpower.com. Or you can give us a call, carry code 510-403-4061, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Till next time.